Okay, so I'm sure up to now you've seen that in lecture we had all these formulas for um, k amp, like alpha and k m and v max plus i, v max minus i. Um, you had all of these alpha equals one plus concentration inhibitor over k i. You have all these different uh, formulas and it's kind of becoming a lot of information. So I wanted to make a video uh, that goes over how we derive a formula. So if you understand this, it'll help you understand why um, like for uncompetitive inhibitors, the lines have to be parallel and how the CAM and the VMAX are changing based on the table that we drew up over here. Okay, so what we're going to do over here is we're going to say that we're going to have base formulas. Okay, so these are our base formulas that we're going to apply in any situation. Okay, and based on what type of inhibitor it is, if it's a competitive or uncompetitive or mixed or non-competitive inhibitor, we're going to alter the formulas to get to our the formulas that we're going to be using in the in for that specific inhibitor okay so the thing that you have to remember is that alpha okay is going to be we're only going to use this when it binds to the free enzyme alpha prime is going to be when it binds to the es complex same thing with like k like ki and ki prime so we use ki for free enzyme ki prime when it binds to the es complex the prime denotes that it binds to the es complex okay so that's how you're going to differentiate the two Okay, so now let's think about, let's go through some examples. Well, let's say competitive inhibitors, okay? Well, what do, oops, what do competitive inhibitors bind to? Well, if we go back to that table, so this is something you just have to memorize, but if you memorize this, you can derive everything else. So competitive inhibitors, we say that it binds only to the free enzyme, okay? So that means that in the case over here, which, which of these two terms do you think I'm gonna need to use? Alpha or alpha prime? Well, if it only binds to the free enzyme, we only need to worry about alpha, okay? So we're only gonna use alpha. So in, in, for our base form, formulas, how we're gonna affect them is we're gonna go over here, and anytime we see alpha prime, we're gonna cross it out and put one, okay? So it's gonna be like we don't have it. So now what our new formulas are going to be, well, our Km is going to be Km plus I. So this is for competitive. Our Km, oops. For competitive inhibitors, our Km is going to be Km plus I equals to alpha times Km minus I. And then our Vmax plus I, well, one over one is one. So V max plus I is equal to V max minus I. Well, let's just think about this. For competitive inhibitors, what, what did we say happened to our V max? We said that it stays the same because you can outcompete the inhibitor by adding more substrate. So that's exactly what you see. What about for the KM? We said that the KM increases, right? Remember, if we go back over here, it looks like it has a lower affinity because the substrate is blocked from binding by the inhibitor. So that means that our CAM, because it has a lower affinity, it has a higher CAM apparent. So that means that our CAM is going to increase in the case of a competitive inhibitor. Well, let's go over here. What's happening to our CAM? Well, we're multiplying two numbers together. And when we multiply two numbers together, that means that we get a larger number. So that means that our CAM is going to increase. Okay, so that's how it works. Now let's try for uncompetitive inhibitor. Well, for an uncompetitive inhibitor, what does that bind to? Well, uncompetitive inhibitors, if we, this is just something you have to memorize, uncompetitive inhibitors, by definition, they bind to the ES complex, only bind to ES complex, okay? So that means that we're gonna only use alpha prime. So we're gonna go back over here, and now we're gonna, again, take our formulas and redraw them out. So this was for competitive, now we're gonna go uncompetitive, and we're gonna, again, start over from these base formulas. Whoops. We're gonna start over from these base formulas that I drew out over here, and we're gonna redraw our formulas based on our base formulas, okay? So for uncompetitive, well, let's think about it. If we're only using alpha prime, that means anywhere we see alpha, we can cross it out. So in this case, we can cross out this alpha and make it one, but we don't see alpha anywhere else. So we're just gonna use these two formulas. So these are two formulas that we're gonna see for uncompetitive. Cam plus i equals one over alpha prime Km minus i. And then Vmax plus i 
equals 1 over alpha prime v max minus i. Now, let me ask you guys this question. It looks, if we're dividing a number by another number, what happens to the km and what happens to the v max? Well, we're dividing these two. If we divide one number by another number, we're going to decrease the km. If we divide v max by another number, we're going to decrease the v max. And if we go back to our table over here, notice how the v max and the km both decrease. And again, we explained it a different way that it has a higher affinity. And that's why it looks like it has a lower cam, but you can also think of it like this, okay? Now, I'm gonna ask you guys a question, and this is just something I want to add for this. If they're both related by one over alpha prime, right? They're both related by one over alpha prime. That means that the Vmax and the cam are both decreasing by the same factor. Well, remember in a previous video, I said that I was gonna to explain to you guys why they must, they have to be parallel for uncompetitive inhibitors. That's exactly why. Both the Vmax and the Km, they're going to be decreasing by that alpha prime factor. And because it's the same factor, the lines must be parallel. So again, to repeat, if your lines are not parallel, that's telling you that you have a mixed inhibitor. They must be, they must be parallel for an uncompetitive inhibitor because again, they're both, they're both related by this alpha prime factor. Okay. Now we're going to go to the same thing over here and we're going to go to mixed inhibitors. Well, mixed inhibitors. What do those bind to? Well, they bind to both the, both the free enzyme and the ES complex, but unequally. So both free enzyme and ES complex. Okay, they bind to both of them, but unequally. Okay, so that means that we're gonna have to use both alpha and alpha prime. Okay, so that means that our base equations, if I go back over here, we're gonna be exactly using these same exact base equations because we can't take anything out. So I'm gonna just copy these over here. I'm gonna oops, paste them here. So because we're, we're, we can't take out alpha or alpha prime, we're just gonna say that for mixed inhibitors, okay, we're gonna have all the terms there. Now, another thing I wanna add, notice how the Vmax, it, because we're dividing two numbers, it has to decrease, but now, it de the cam can increase or decrease depending on if alpha is bigger or if alpha prime is bigger. And that's exactly what you see if you go back to this table over here. We said that it could either increase if it binds better to the free enzyme or decrease if it binds better to the ES complex. And that's why we had two different curves or two different graphs for the mixed inhibitors because the cam could either increase or decrease. And now you know why, because we can either increase or it, we could either multiply the number because if alpha is bigger than alpha prime, this is going to be greater than one and we multiply numbers. But if alpha prime is bigger than alpha, then we're, our denominator is gonna be bigger and we're gonna be dividing numbers so our cam is going to decrease, okay? Now we're gonna to go to non-competitive inhibitors. That's our last example. So for non-competitive inhibitors, what does that bind to? Non-competitive. Well, this binds again to both the free enzyme and the ES complex. Okay, so we're going to be using both alpha and alpha prime, but there's a special, the non-competitive inhibitors are a special case of mixed inhibitors, right? So they're a special case of mixed inhibitors in that it binds to the free enzyme and the ES complex equally, right? So if I came back over here and I could just, oops, if I can just select this one and then I paste this. Okay, so this is non-competitive. If I go over here, non-competitive. Well, we can't take anything out, but we know some uh, a special piece of information. Okay, I I wrote non-competitive wrong, but it's okay. So the the key thing here is that because it binds to both the free enzyme and the ES complex equally, that means that alpha is equal to alpha prime. So that means that we're dividing the same number by itself in this formula. So this is going to be one. So that means that the KM is going to stay the same and our Vmax is going to decrease because we're dividing two numbers again. And if you go back to your table over here, notice that for non-competitive inhibitors, our KM stays the same and then our Vmax is going to decrease. So anytime if you're confused on how to, how the, if you forget like what happens for the Vmax or the KM for uh, non-competitive mix or uncompetitive, all these different types of inhibitors, you can either go to, Go back to your uh, line of work plots and just reason it out there, 
or you can go to these formulas and just derive it from here and you can use it to go back and plug this information to the table. So all of these things are different ways you can arrive to the same answer. So if you're ever lost, you can do go get to your answer in different ways to get to the right answer.